Alright everyone, welcome to Murphy's Law Garage again. And today we continue moving on with how we built the Bronco before YouTube. So I'm going to jump right into it. Here's our very first picture here. It's where we left off. This is actually a rough country lift kit. The shocks. And I have painted them black because I didn't like the silver paint that they came in. Don't give us flack for the rough country, guys. It it was well within budget. We haven't had any issues with it. And believe it or not, we didn't need many pieces of it because of work that, more custom work that had to come along with this. Here's another picture of the shocks hanging around. All right, so what you're looking at here, this is the stock 4x4 Bronco spring, the coil spring for the front suspension and here is the coil spring specialties coil that was built for us we had a pair of custom coils made that were plus two or two and a half inches i believe and then plus 500 pounds here it is you can see both of the new shocks in here all of the axle knuckle so and so forth has been painted and uh... there's our shiny new coil spring another shot of it I believe I don't see anything different here's the driver's side also done you can see here we got some new extended brake lines to go along with this David has gone in and dropped a fender which you can see has also been sanded on the outside he's dropped this fender in here to show just how much taller the Bronco is than it was before and here's with the wheels on without the fenders on and you can see that the front kit is on but the rear is not yet so the truck is laying back at a good angle <clears throat> alright so here we've brought the Bronco outside and this is the first time it's going outside since we started the project lots of pushing happened here <laughs> and here the F-250 has come into the shop This is David very excited for what's about to happen. I believe this picture was probably taken at about 4 o'clock in the morning. We used to get up real early, get a real early start, and then finish around lunchtime or so so we could spend time with family. You can see here, we've this picture skips a good bit. We've tripped, taken basically the whole front clip off, which was like cookie cutter, just like the 89 Bronco. Um, all of this is missing now you've got the diesel engine exposed and then we ended that day having got the 7.3 sitting on the floor here right here you can see that the transmission has been separated from the torque converter now this transmission was a bit of a special issue for us because these specific transmissions weren't known for being very stout we knew we wanted to turn the 7.3 up and the donor truck was two-wheel drive and you can see the two-wheel drive snout right here where the TK should be <clears throat> oh I'm sorry and later later you'll see that we've sent this off to uh, Mike with Performa Transmissions who uh, went ahead and disassembled all of this put us the four-wheel drive style tail on it and uh, stuffed some uh, 4R 100 parts into this E4OD to make it much stronger if you can tell, David looks awfully happy here holding his little baby turbo. <laughs> uh, you'd swear it was a child he was holding on to, and it looks like he just took a picture of it. Uh, what David, David has done here is we've begun pulling stuff off of the motor to get it cleaned up here. Uh, we were never able to hear this motor run, so as we were working on it, it was mostly a guessing game of uh, what was actually being done here. Don't. <laughs> Oops. Oh well, don't mind that. Um, you can see, you, it was a guessing game of what was broken and what was okay. So you can see here that this is a glow plug slash injector driver harness. And this one was destroyed. And this is the positive pin for the glow plug. And it tends to get super hot and melt out of there. And you can tell this is a replacement unit that was put in because, you know, this happened and the truck wouldn't start most likely here. 
but you can see down here you see right there butt splices I hate butt splices don't put butt splices in an engine harness of a vehicle just don't do it ever now what's happened here is David has begun washing on this motor this is actually his uh, sister's kids <coughs> excuse me kiddie pool that we went go steal because it was winter and we couldn't for the life of us find a dollar store or Walmart anything selling a plastic kiddie pool but we needed to sit the motor and something to wash on it ah okay so fast forward this is a day where I spent a bunch of time doing work on the motor this is the oil pump assembly so this is a nice shiny new oil pump assembly for the front of the motor I was getting it prepped up to be sealed and stuck back on this is the timing cover uh, the ear that was broken off I believe is something right here if I remember correctly from when the the previous owner was working on those seals um, this actually came from a junkyard and it took two attempts for us to get the right one because of course the 96 was the only one that had this very specific style of timing cover there ever so slightly different you can see here I've got the oil pump assembly back on and uh, one of these sensors has been returned here back side of it is all cleaned up real pretty for the gasket here what I've done is I've taken the stock exhaust manifolds off I've cleaned them up very very well and I've sprayed them down with uh, Cerakote <clears throat> Here is the front of the motor without the timing cover on. I took time to get this all cleaned up because it was absolutely disgusting. Uh, just checked in here and made sure everything looked pretty. Here I put the uh, both of the manifolds that were in Cerakote as well as the, uh, the Y pipe that uh, comes off the back of the turbo into the oven so that the Cerakote can cure. Here you can see I've got the timing cover back on. This is a brand new water pump and thermostat neck and thermostat that's been put on. Open oh, that last picture. You can actually see that I've uh, dropped the oil pan here. Alright, motor's picked up and turned around. It's a good bit cleaner. You can see just the absolute mass of junk that's been washed off of this thing. This floor used to be clean and pretty. We literally built the shop to build a Bronco. <laughs> this is the mess we made out of it with this motor. Here's the back side of the motor. When I was redoing the rear main seal, you can see this galley here is opened and I'm cleaning it up. Got this, uh, this back galley plate back on again and we've got a new rear main seal, which by the way is the damn thing that decided to start leaking on us here recently. <coughs> Alright, so here is the uh, E4OD transmission that came out of the F250. You can see here is it's had the tail shaft slash rear case modification so that the transfer case can be put on it. I believe this is the toning ring for not speed sense, it was for something. Uh, and Mike put this on here because he wasn't sure what method we would end up using to tell how fast the truck was moving, and we'll get to that later with the standalone. But here's our E4OD with a bunch of 4R100 guts inside of it to make it a lot stronger. It's painted satin black to match the truck and a uh, just a new rebuilt OEM converter. Here is the transfer case that came out of the uh, Bronco. Right here are the two drive shafts that we ordered originally thinking that if we just got E4OD style Bronco drive shafts that they would work for what we needed. That was correct for the front drive shaft. So if you're doing this diesel swap, the front drive shaft, and this only applies if you don't already have an E4OD, if you had an AOD transmission truck like ours, um, this drive shaft will work in the front, bolt in, no problem. The rear drive shaft, on the other hand, is a whole different story, and we'll get for, we'll get back to that later. Uh, so anyways, the transfer case right here, you see this piece right here? This is something that David found on eBay from a junkyard. This is the E4OD style adapter to this T-case um, so that we could get rid of the AOD uh, adapter and put the E4OD. Now, whenever this is put in here, this bracket right here that handles the, uh, the 
T case, four high, four low, so on and so forth situation. This required some very minor modification and what I mean by that is it was quite literally grinding a shoulder off of a bolt and sticking in there. It's super obvious whenever you put it together and I wish I had better pictures of this but whenever you put it together the, the, the little bit that was in the way to keep this from working on here will be obvious when you're looking at it. Um, what you're looking at inside of here is we were attempting to assess the condition of the 7.3 to see whether or not it needed to be rebuilt and we had a very uh, very blessed surprise in here whenever we got digging inside of it. These pistons are brand new. No scratching on the skirts here. You have some lube from when it was built still hanging off the end of it. As well as, and I don't think any of these pictures show it, but yeah look you can actually see some of it here. There was obvious signs of damage inside of the block from when this motor had grenaded itself and you know slapped a piston rod around in here, a uh, connecting rod around in here, and caused a little damage. In fact, even the crank had a little bit of scarring on it that had been cleaned up. So this motor was extremely freshly rebuilt. I, I, I would be willing to say the previous owner probably only drove it for a few thousand miles, and it was rebuilt right before whoever had it and when it blew up you can see here again just how absolutely immaculate this piston is right here um, you know when you're talking about a motor with over 200,000 miles you just don't see something this clean you can still see you see the cylinder here <coughs> it's not exactly polished but you can still see the uh, the uh, boring marks inside of it just very very new you can see here that David has a uh, taken the uh, E4OD transmission and used that part that he got off of eBay to made it to the transfer case and uh, let's see you can see here that I've got part of the shift selector system put back on and the reason why this is here is we were trying to determine whether or not the 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 whole shift selector mechanism would work for the transfer case and what it was is this bar right here was not long enough to reach from here to here and this is actually something we did on video on YouTube very recently here where me and uh, well, Seth made the bar that goes between these two you can check that out in the build continues video this is the uh, the leak stopper gasket that comes with studs that go on the bottom of the box it's I mean it's gangster this is designed to stop that infamous pan leak that these things have you can also see here that instead of getting one of those fancy kits to fix the oil uh, dipstick feed tube leak that likes to happen right here I actually went ham with black RTV uh, Permatex Ultra Black and sealed this all up really well and rebent everything so it would clamp really tight and once I had all that RTV on there there was basically no way that this was ever coming apart or leaking again here it is with the pan back on the motor the back end all sealed up you can see you got the adapter on there, uh, the, the flex ring, I actually had to order a new flex plate right at the last second, I actually caught that there was a crack in it before we put it back on. <clears throat> well this picture is a little bit out of line, but this is uh, the bottom of the motor again. I don't, I don't see any evident damage or anything in here that might would show you all what it was looking like. Here's the valve cover having been pulled off. We have our injectors and our glow plugs, and I was just looking over the top of the motor to make sure it looked all clean. Now there were a couple of injector, uh, injectors here that looked new. The drivers were new, and then like these on the end were older. So it had some injectors that had been replaced. I imagine the machine shop probably had them tested to see if they were flowing well. Same on this side, except this still, these two right here would be your new ones, and these were two older ones. Got the cover back on again. I eventually came back here and got this uh, prettied up a little bit. Much like this one, you see I've got it cleaned up and painted. Both sides cleaned up and painted. Uh, brand new fuel pump, brand new fuel lines and fittings. Um, some more brand new fittings up here, brand new sensor. The fuel bowl was disgusting. They had what appeared to be mud sitting on the bottom of it and that truck was still running. <clears throat> fun story this line right here 
blew up on David once the truck was all done and he was driving it around here. Very recently, this blew up and uh, David had to have it replaced. You can see David here, he's gone and uh, painted the tea case really pretty. And this has all been cleaned up. Alright, you can see we've got the crank pulley back on, the water pump pulley, the water neck is back on up here. Actually, this is the thermostat housing up here, I believe. And uh, you can see the top of the block is all clean and nice and pretty. Uh, another picture of the same thing, I believe. Okay, so right here you can see the exhaust manifolds are back on again. Brand new gaskets. These are the reused bolts, if I remember correctly. Um, for good measure, we've got some high temp uh, RTV on here. You can see the turbos back on. And uh, we've actually mated the transmission back to the motor. Again, here's the turbo. These are the uh, the original couplers with some new clamps. You can see we've got the power steering pump. <coughs> I believe that this power steering pump, yeah, this power steering pump was the original F250's power steering pump. What you see right here is actually the vacuum pump, and this is also the F250-73's uh, compressor. Alright, some more. Here's that oil cooler right here that's got some O-rings here and here, and uh, right here is the timing cover where it attaches, and the timing cover was broken. You've got the back side of the motor here with, I believe, what they call the EBPV something valve right here. You've got the down pipes that I've got all cleaned up real nice. The up pipes, I'm sorry, coming up right here. Oh, fun story. This I spent about an hour and a half uh, making this rope uh, to hold the weight of this motor up here. And David was so intrigued by it, he actually nailed it to the wall in the shop so that he could look at it. Alright, you can see here that the this is a brand new flex plate and this is back on. This is all torqued up. Alright, nothing new there. Alright, so what has happened here is that the, uh, the F-250 is outside and left a trail of fluids for the neighbors to look at. And the Bronco is back inside. And... Uh, well, this is where I'm going to leave y'all guys with a little bit of a teaser. Here's the Bronco preparing to receive its motor for the first time. Well, y'all stick around for the next video, the part three of the series. We still have a ton of... a ton. You may think that that motor floating in, in front of that truck means that this is about to end. Not remotely, I promise you. We learned a lot when we tried to stick that motor in. But uh, y'all hang around. Thank you very much for being here. God bless. All of our social media is linked down below as well as the link to this album. Y'all stick around for the next one. Thank you.